Uh, it's gone on five o'clock and I'm going to head off for the day. It's going to rain at about probably nine o'clock onwards. All right, well, I think I'm about two thirds of the way up and I don't think it's going to get light yet for another I reckon hour, I can sort of see a, a slight change in the sky, but it's very, very, very minor. Oh, you know, you're getting hot when you have to rip your hat off. <laughs> and the temperature's about, it's about four degrees up here. Because we've got that cloud cover above us acting like a big insulation layer. So the winds today are going to be working from the west southwest, and it's interesting because the faces here, the southern faces are the ones that actually face into the sun, because we're in the northern hemisphere, so it's all reversed. So the northern slopes receive the sun in New Zealand and Australia, and the southern faces receive the sun in the northern hemisphere. Obviously it still comes up from the east, so I'm going to look on the southern eastern faces first, and then work my way around throughout the day to the southwestern faces for the evening. I think I've climbed from about 700 meters to this will be coming up to 1900. The highest I'll probably get today is like 2300. There you can see the country here it's quite nice. What we've got is we've got like a really beautiful uh, conifer evergreen forest. You've got really, really good green grasses, lots of herbs and little herb fields. And then you've got these bands of bluffs. And I'm just trying to glass at the bottom of those bands of bluffs, interspersed with these conifer trees. And then I'm going to sidle further up this valley up this way. Into the head of it, basically. I think it goes for a few more kilometres. And the reason I chose this location is because the information centre said that it didn't really get any hikers. It was too far out of the way, a bit remote. There's no places to stop and get food, <laughs> uh, which is fine for me. I bought my lunch and stuff. But she said she wasn't sure if there was chamois or ibex here. Now, I'm sure there are, just a matter of looking for them. But yeah, look at these views. Spectacular. Yeah, yeah. amazing, eh? sitting and doing some glassing up in here but the cloud keeps coming and going so I knew that would happen today I'm just trying to make the most of it while the clouds cleared a little bit all right I'm gonna get back to glassing because it's just started to push past again and open up this set of bluffs just got this camera rolling just getting a little bit of the movement of clouds you know as time passes I love a bit of cloud cover, I actually think hunting with cloud cover is great. A bit of fog, a bit of mood, settles the animals, gives them some feeling of comfort. Well, I've just spotted my first chamois for the morning, so it is in that band that I was expecting them to be in. I've only just got to this glassing point and it's quite a good one, so I'm going to put the camera away and keep glassing and follow that same contour. Beautiful country. I mean, look at this. <laughs> this is all the stuff I've got ahead of me. It's amazing. That chamois up there is definitely a buck. He's on his own and he's just got that heavier look about him than a, a lighter frame nanny. The wind is kind of blowing in its direction, which is a bit unfortunate. I was expecting to see them from here on up, <laughs> not at the not at the sort of entrance to this whole catchment system on the other side.
Well, I've had to put on a, uh, another layer. It's getting a bit colder, and you can see this cloud's really pushing in right now. Yeah. I'm thinking about heading up to that chamois, even though it's foggy. I'm just having a think about it. I'll make my mind up when I get down there. What I don't want to do is start climbing up for that chamois and get totally pea soup done. That's not something I want to chance myself with in unfamiliar terrain. Oh look, it's given me some clear spot. This is back up where I've just come down from. Well I have decided to climb up and have a look on the other side of the valley at that chamois buck. It's raining now, I'd say. She's probably, I don't know, eight mils an hour. It's not pouring, but it will intensify as the morning plays out. <clears throat> well, I'm really glad I've come up because it's actually clear enough to be able to see where I'm going. <sighs> it's surprising because there's blue sky right up the very top. <clears throat> Make hay while the sun shines, I guess. All I want to do is to be able to get in close on that chamois, get my pack off, get my camera out, and just film it. There's one foot in front of the other here. A bit of sign there. I didn't think it would last. That's clouds come right in. Pea soup. At least I'm in a little bit of timber here. I'm here some timber. I'm on a little bit of a, a game trail through here. And I'm about to get out of the timber line so. I would imagine this will kind of be the area that they just feed through before they poke out into the top and then vice versa come down from the top and just bed down in the timber or just on the edge of it. I'm going to cut this way. Right, it's now gone on 9.15, just past 9. And the wind is actually now, the thermals are kind of working up. to see Jon Snow and the Stark family up there. Don't mistake me for a White Walker. Shammy have got amazing eyesight. They're very, very, very acute. And they pick you up at long distance. Pick up the slightest movement. And because that Shammy's probably higher than me, he's going to be in an advantageous position whereas I'm coming from slightly below. I can't really come from above unless I want to go and join Jon Snow.
I've just spotted a group of chamois and then another family of chamois. So I'm going to sneak down amongst a bit of a trail here that I'm just going to go down and get as close as I can. The thermals are working up in my favour and I've got my good camera so I'm pretty stoked about that. It's a bit wet, I've been getting a bit drizzled on and I've probably got, I don't know, 300 vertical metres to go down to where the chamois are and the thermals are working straight up in my favour which is really really good so that's the country that I'm going down into got my Garmin in reach in case I need it I've already sent a message to a family saying this is where we are, check us out on the map oh, I just love this sort of stuff I feel like at least my wife's put the best spot to go for a family holiday my gosh Right, I've just got into position here and the chamois is about, I don't know, 170 metres away below me, sitting away so I'll turn the camera and I'll show you. Oh, there's a chamois right below me. Hang on. <coughs> the chamois looking straight at me. Looks like a young buck. She's pretty foggy. She's souped right up now. And I'm just not comfortable sidling through the steep wet tussock when I know for a fact that there's two huge bluff systems below. I just don't um I don't encourage taking unnecessary risks. And I think that's an important message to get across to people who come into the high country is to like not underestimate how dangerous and how quickly things can change for the worst. You know, visibility is now down to less than 50 metres. It's wet, it's steep, it's unfamiliar terrain. You just don't want to make poor decisions. And for those young people who are still yet to, um, you know, spend decades climbing dangerous mountainous country, you shouldn't take unnecessary risks. You should always be safe, make calculated decisions, stay within your comfort limits. If you really like to push it and feel that adrenaline all the time, then you're just putting yourself into another bracket of risk taking. And if you're comfortable doing that, then that's that's your call, but I'm not comfortable taking unnecessary risks anymore. Well, here comes that weather. Oh, I'd prefer it if it was hailing. Give me, give me some dry stuff, not the wet stuff. Look what I've just stumbled onto, right up in the middle of nowhere. Some private huts or something, it might be hunting huts. You can see on the door here, some of these numbers are as early as 1874. People carving. Look, here we go. 1885, this one here. FM, 1885. FB, FM, 1884. 1892. 
What about the heritage? That's like nearly as old as New Zealand. Not quite, but it's, these are hunting huts. Um, there's like chamois horns, there's roe deer horns, they're all here. Look, I'll show you. Look up the top there, you can see all the horns hanging upside down. So cool. And this beautiful, ferny, mossy, archaic Jurassic Park type forest. The cloud is coming and going. If it pours again, I'm just going to beeline it out. Okay, it's time to go home. This is no good. It's proper, proper clagged in and proper raining now. But you can see all the wafts of rain across the other side of the valley here just getting belted. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. I am now going to see you later. Bye.